welcome to another episode of Nonstop Nick Hill. It's officially December 1st today. I've been traveling for exactly one month and I'm here in the sleepy beachside town of Dubab Jalau. Right in front of me is the path heading down to the beach and there's a couple of restaurants down there. I had dinner at one of those restaurants uh, last night and I think I'll see what's on the menu today as well. Today is just a kind of stressful day, so I'll tell you all about it when we get to the restaurant. Um, but yeah, this town is generally like a small fishing village, um, but I think it's been set up for tourists. It's a lot of like small cafes, hot hotels and hostels. A lot of the uh, wealthier people from Dakar uh, have second uh, residences down here right by the beach. It's only about less than 50 kilometers away from the city, so it's very, very accessible and you have pretty much unobstructed access to the beach pretty much everywhere here. This path pretty much takes you right down to the water. <laughs> okay, just got to the restaurant and this is where I had dinner yesterday and I spoke a little bit with the restaurant owner so I decided to come back. The food I had last night was pretty good. I had mafe, which is a peanut-based gravy uh, with chicken. And so I'm here, my flight isn't until 6 p.m. It was supposed to be at 4.30, then got delayed another hour and a half until 6 p.m. And I'm actually really happy about that because that buys me some extra time. So why am I happy about it? It's because I still don't have my visa to Côte d'Ivoire and I'm supposed to be going to Abidjan tonight. As I touched on on the previous episode, the process for securing a visa for U.S. citizens to Ivory Coast is supposed to be pretty easy. It's an e-visa system where you apply online, pay your money online, and then you receive an authorization email, um, and which you present at the airport to receive your actual visa. The thing is, it can take up to 48 hours to receive your authorization, and so I'm still waiting on that authorization email. It's been over 24 hours at the moment. I still haven't received an email, so I'm sort of stressed out, constantly refreshing my email, trying to see when I'll get my authorization. Um, it might be right when I'm at the airport, it might be when I'm already on the flight. I have my boarding pass and everything, so I should be, in theory, be able to get on my flight. Or it might be after I get to the airport, but that's something I'm going to need. So at the moment, if I can get on the flight, it might be a matter of getting my authorization in the email once I've already landed in Abidjan, or what they actually send is like a payment receipt, just playing dumb and acting as if I thought that that was the final visa authorization. Um, so I don't know, I don't really know, but it's kind of annoying at the moment. I mean, it, in the end, it's all my fault. It's my fault that I didn't read the fine print. Um, I didn't realize it would take 48 hours to get the, uh, the authorization from the Ivory Coast government. But it was also just a matter of not having access to the internet and data and everything when I was in Gambia to be able to do all this research in advance. It's really tough when you're traveling full time and you've got to think about what am I going to do today? What am I going to do tomorrow? As well as, well as the things which requ require a bit planning in advance as well. So I've caught myself in one of those <laughs> little ruts right now. It was just about 2 p.m. I had my chibujen fish and rice uh, at the restaurant. It was great, but now I've got to head back to the hotel where I left my bags for the day. See if I can print out the payment receipt, which I received from the Ivory Coast. At least, maybe even pretend to just act like that's what I thought that that's actually the approval. At least I have something in my hands <laughs> for when I get there. I can play dumb after that. And other than that, I'm just gonna probably enjoy a little bit more time, but down by the beach, but from like the hotel and hopefully we can grab a cab to the airport then. Hello everyone, so I'm speaking from the lounge here at the Dakar airport. I just wanted to give you all an update on how my entrance into Ivory Coast looks like it's going to go at the moment. I thought they might not even like let me on the plane, but they looked at my paperwork. They know that I have all the pieces available. Um, and so they said you can get on the plane and then just the word they use is negotiate with uh, the authorities in Ivory Coast. Um, they pointed out that I do not have the actual approval email yet, which would come into 
in about 48 hours, which there's only about maybe like 10 hours like left within that period of time in which I should receive the confirmation. But they did point out that the, just the payment confirmation that I got was is typically not sufficient enough to enter the country. But for now, they've let me board. They said the alternative would have been to wait until Saturday for the next Kenya Airways flight, which goes to Abidjan. But for now, they let me pass, they let me get on the airplane. And uh, they said I can play it out basically with the authorities in Ivory Coast. Some people might be lenient and let me through. Other people might um, not be so lenient. Uh, but I, for my main concern was just to ask them, I'm not doing anything illegal, right? Nothing will get me in prison when I in, <laughs> land at the airport. And they're like, no, it just depends on the person. But I have all my paperwork and who knows. In the three, four, five hours that it takes to get there, um, my confirmation might actually be waiting for me in my inbox. So that's the best that can happen at this moment. But for now, I'm just going to take a breather. Uh, I got a drink and have having some di dinner at the lounge um, and then what I don't know whatever happens next will happen but despite this general chaos and anxiety surrounding how I'm gonna get into Ivory Coast I wanted to make sure I reflect and I'm intentional about the week or ten days I've spent here in Senegal it's everything from visiting Saint Louis and being helped by Mauritanians who are living in Senegal to meeting uh, friends in Dakar to going out to uh, Casamos to Ziguinchor and meeting uh, Hassan and his family. I've just had a great experience here in Senegal. It's definitely been way more than I ever imagined. It would be it. I learned way more than I ever imagined I would and I saw so many diverse, unique, yet, I don't know, united parts of the country. And it just really helped me co uh, complicate my narrative of Sub-Saharan Africa because this was my first time in a non-Arabic speaking part of Africa. And I'm just really, really excited to see what the future holds. Provided I could, of course, uh, get into another country right now. <laughs> But on that, I will keep you updated. I told you, I told you, nonstop Nick Hill would be the ups and downs of travel. And I'm only human. I can only remember so many things at once. Can't keep track of everything. And trust me, there is a lot to keep track of. So sometimes I make a mistake and I learn from it. But oh well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Here I am in the terminal in Dakar airport. I'm waiting to board my flight. And it's actually a Kenya Airways flight, which I was surprised in the beginning too. You might be wondering how it's Kenya Airways between Dakar and Abidjan, both in West Africa. But it's part of a longer route between Dakar and Nairobi, uh, which makes a stop to drop off and pick up passengers in Abidjan. And the flight was originally supposed to depart at around 4.30, but then it was delayed to 6 p.m. And now it's almost 6 p.m. and we haven't even begun boarding yet. So I think it's going to be a while before we get there. All of which might actually work to my favor. The longer we take, the more time there is for the Côte d'Ivoire authorities to send me my confirmation. And that will just make things a lot easier when I land in Abidjan. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just the world working for me. That's how I like to consider it. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes at this point. Um, you know, anything. I'll take anything I can get in terms of buying time. I just boarded and after sitting in all these uncomfortable public transport vehicles between different cities in West Africa, the light space and the comfort of these chairs is beyond belief. I guess everything is relative. If you're not sharing this leg space and this seat space with another person, it's luxury. I'd never take these things for granted. Um, also, when I was waiting to board, I was talking with um, a man who lives in the Central African Republic, in Bangui. He's traveling to Bangui on this flight uh, from Dakar to Nairobi and then changing from Nairobi to Bangui. And he's like, oh yeah, you have nothing to be worried about, about your visa situation when you get to Abidjan. That's just how we do things here. You know, there's one formal way of doing things, but there's always another way where you can get things done when you're there in person. So maybe this is a lot more normalized for people 
who live on the continent than it is for me, and I shouldn't be as freaked out as I am. Uh, but, I mean, the worst thing is that they send me back to Dhaka, or I just wait out the 48-hour period at the airport. <laughs> Either way, we'll check it out. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy this flight, this great leg space, maybe watch a movie or two, and see how it goes. I mean, it's only a three-hour flight, probably one movie, maybe we'll watch some TV shows. <laughs> anyway, I uh, will see you when we're out of Senegal. It's a great time. Thank you, Senegal, for being a great third country for non-stop Nick Hill and the Gambia. We can't forget the Gambia for being a great fourth country for non-stop Nick Hill. And we'll see what, if any, country is the fifth country today. Well, I just arrived in Abidjan. I got really lucky, or maybe that's just how things work, is because I, I came here with none of the proper documentation that you needed to get a visa, but I just sat down and I told the e-visa agent my situation and he didn't even try to ask me for any money he was just like okay like it just seemed like i was pleading my case and then he was just like oh go ahead and il y a pas d'orange okay okay donc je dois choisir entre les deux euh qu'est-ce que vous recommandez comme vous voulez juste j'aimerais comme 10 giga oui c'est possible Okay, so as I said, I'm here in Abidjan. I'm trying to take care of some of the necessities before I head to the Airbnb. First thing, get, withdraw some money. Second thing, get an, a SIM card so I can contact my host and then head straight to the neighborhood and get some sleep tonight because I'm excited. But yeah, I've never been happier to land and make my way through the exit doors into the arrivals hall as before. I'm also really glad I didn't just figure that, oh, I don't have the proper paperwork in time. I shouldn't even go to the airport and get on that airplane. Um, I'm glad they just pushed me up onto the airplane and I, I'm here right now or else that would have completely, completely derailed my plans. Okay, I'll see you in, uh, in Abidjan proper then.